For the next three weeks, I have absolutely zero jobs on the calendar. And while that is terrifying for some people, for me, it's just part of the game. I know I will get jobs booked, but I get a lot of people saying, what do you do on your off days? So I just wanted to share the thoughts that come into my head during the day, the things that I must do to maintain the freelancer life, but it is not normal. So most people who are at a job will scratch their heads, but this is how I operate on a day where I don't have any work. I posted a picture of me watching UFC Embedded saying I'm, I'm analyzing it so I can get this type of work and someone DM'd me and said, what kind of content do you want to shoot? Anytime I've been asked that in the past, it's always, I want to be the camera guy on an Anthony Bourdain travel show. That is exactly the type of work where you go out for maybe two, three months and you're just traveling, traveling. It's grindy, it's hard, and you just get to see so many cultures, so many experiences that you never get to see if you're working in your hometown. I have a much smaller version of that with the corporate work that I do. I travel all around the US. I go to different conferences, conventions, executive offices, and I really like that style. I would just like to take it to the next level. Another really cool idea that I've seen some people do is become the official videographer for certain influencers or high profile people where you're basically strapped to them by the hip and wherever they travel, whatever they do, you're next to them documenting. I would highly consider that too. If, if there was a, a very cool position, someone that I really liked, enjoyed spending time with um, and could create content for them that would have my unique touch to it, I think that could be really, really cool. And we're trying to be healthy, so tonight we're having fresh caught salmon and white rice. Obviously not everybody can do that. Um, I don't have a wife, I don't have kids, I don't have a mortgage, so my I've designed my life to be very no strings attached so that I can always take freelance opportunities, take things that just come at a moment's notice. That's how I like to operate. Well, that's always a nice notification to get. Here's a successful case study for networking. My buddy Jay brings me in for a lot of freelance work. Most recently, we shot a golf commercial in South Carolina. A couple months ago, I had a job come in. I couldn't do it. I sent it to him. He did it. It went great. Now the client is coming back a couple months later and saying we need a pickup interview. So he's going to take that job, but instead of renting their required FX6 package from Lens Pro to Go or any of those online sites, he's going to give the rental rate to me. So I am going to give him a fully rigged FX6. Um, a lot of people have been wondering how I transport what this bag is. It's a Shimoda roller bag. The description is in, or the link is in my description. The reason this thing is so great is because it's so deep. I could not find a bag that could fit an FX6 dropped into it. And this has solved the problem. So I, the only thing I have to disassemble when I put this in here is I have to take the monitor off. I could squeeze it in here, but it's just a little too tight, I'm afraid. So I'm just gonna put this in here, and then the organizational compartments are new. So this is from um, Nomadic or something like that. Very expensive, I, it should not be worth that much. And then I got my lens. I have two uh, separated lavalier packs. I like the clear front, I get to see what's in there. And then a bag with AKS, cables, you know, random stuff. And then these two bricks go right in here. And uh, maybe we'll put them sideways. Um, there is a lens cap on here, so there's no damage to the front element. That's about it. This is why I like having everything rigged up and ready to go. I am so fast when I use this setup. But the point is, Jay gets his job, I get my rental fee, and we're all in this mutually beneficial relationship. So I got hungry and I just made the salmon and rice now, but I need to catch up a little bit on some invoicing. So this is uh, work for Combat Night, which is the promotion that I film for, for mixed martial arts. I categorize it as date, location. I learned this file structure when I was freelance editing for a uh, conference coverage company. This is extremely helpful because it's it's numerical and then every project in in here follows the same structure. Super easy to find. But as far as the content goes, when I film these, 
It's about 10 to 15 deliverables, all vertical content. Lately, I've been trying to make them some funny content. So um, this one is, Dad, I want to grow up to be a fighter as a career. So they will put the text in there, but I kind of prompt them, hey, this is how it was designed. And so when they posted this, which they post all of this content on their Instagram, you can check that out. Mine is the one that doesn't look like an iPhone. Um, then they they put their own text and their own captions and they flesh it out. Um, but right now I need to invoice them. I decided to check Upwork, the freelancer app. I don't normally do it, but I saw this listing and it seemed very much in my realm. So it's basically shoot a character and film some B-roll. I did notice that it had been up for a few days and a lot of people have proposed to it. So. I decided I'll just shoot my shot anyway, so this is what I said. I keep it short and sweet, and hopefully just to get them to reach out to me. So I hope this one goes through, but not a high likelihood. And this is probably what takes up most of my day, is just admin and invoicing and client communication. The shooting happens very, very fast, but it's all the pre-production and people getting to know you and trust you, and can you do the job, this is what we're looking for. It's a lot of that. So as long as you can stay on top of that, um, then you will get more leads coming in. But I always like to have YouTube in the background just because I can watch things and get new ideas, you know, stuff for my channel that I can implement. So I have had one affiliate sponsorship to the channel and that was from the Art of Documentary. Last year I paid full price, I got in there, I loved it and I talked about it on my channel quite a few times. So one of the admin members to the Art of Documentary Facebook group saw that I had my channel. They liked the vlogs that I was doing and they said, would you like an affiliate code when we open up? It's a two week window. We give you a percentage of everybody that uses your code and signs up and that's it, no strings attached. So 28 people bought these education modules and bought into the membership and in total, that was $24,000 of enrollment. Now for me to understand that I brought an online academy $24,000 of enrollment is insane because I did that. That was my audience. I got them a quarter of a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. So now what's my take? They had worked out a 10%. So. For my, let me think, I think I did two in integrations into my videos where I just talked about this is what I did, this is why I like AOD. That 10% is 2,400. That was the easiest 2,400 I've ever made. One of them I did in my car after grocery shopping. So as I go through the art of documentary and they are releasing a new cinematography course in September that I will definitely be getting, I'm trying to pick up what is valuable to someone who is paying hundreds of dollars to be in this program. I also signed up for Luke Forsyth's free newsletter. I know newsletters are a great way to build an audience. There's a lot of free things that you can do to be aware of how the community moves and, and how they operate and, and what they're trending towards. And that's all I'm trying to do with this YouTube channel. One is to just catalog the memories of all these trips and two is to just steadily grow in in this new area. The park is empty and it uh, feels like 100 degrees. Ah. It's raining, time to leave. And then I heard there was a local skateboard filmmaker who was premiering his film. He went down to Argentina with a bunch of guys. They skated, filmed, did the whole thing, and then made a video, came back, had a little art show, and rented out the Orlando Museum of Art and invited everybody in the community. Our video first, and then Red Bull actually followed us through this whole trip and did a documentary about our trip as well. So we're gonna show that afterwards. So we got a double header coming for you guys. Super stoked to show it to you. Let's get it going. Matt, run it up.
I always like going to film festivals, whether it's documentary, skateboarding, whatever. I feel like it keeps you in the now part of the community. But I was really interested to hear about the Red Bull partnership that they had. So they made their video. And then while they were there, the Red Bull film crew came in and made a documentary about what they were doing. So this video was completely different. It was gimbal, it was narrative, it was great titles, graphic design, just a completely different look. And the skate filmer chose a VX1000, so it just shows everybody loves Sony no matter what industry, but I was just really impressed. It just shows you gotta start your personal project and then you will get viewers, you will get clients, you will get sponsors, it all comes later. This is not a nine to five. It is a throw things at the wall type of approach plant seeds in this area, plant seeds in that area, water everything, take notes, retry. I like that style, it's not for everyone. And there are many different speeds and trajectories that it will take you. So if anyone is considering freelancing, it is not stable, it is what you make it though. So you can set yourself up with retainers. For me, I like jumping in and out of jobs here and there and that allows me the freedom to grab any opportunity that comes my way. That's how I prefer it and that's what I'm gonna keep doing.